I just got your two two new books and excited to share your podcast interview tips and in another episode, you know, how to be a great podcast guest. So tell us a little bit about your podcasting books. Yeah. So first off, these these books kind of came to me. And I don't mean that from the writing standpoint. I mean literally members of Podmatch, which is one of the products we have. And I'll quickly give the overview for anyone who's listening who's not familiar. It's a service that works very similar to how a dating app works. But instead of connecting people for dates, it connects people for podcast interviews. So if you're a podcast host saying, I'm looking for a guest that knows or does X, Y, Z, the system will automatically find you a guest to talk about that that's in the system and vice versa. If you're a guest and you say, hey, I want to talk about my craft, which is this, it'll find you a host that says they're looking for it. So that was that's the whole idea behind the service, and that's called Podmatch. And I had members approach me saying, hey, we want to write a book about it. And I was like, well, I don't really know where to start with that. I'm like, how many of you are there? And they said, there's 30 of us. It's like 30 of you? Like, what, what kind of club is this inside of our software I don't know about, right? Like, they built this little micro community and said, we want to do this. And I was like, well, I, I don't know how. If, if someone here knows how to, let me know. And one of the people specializes in building multi-author books. What are things podcast hosting things from listening to that episode that came to mind. I think you did really well. I really do like that episode. Uh, something we talked about offline that and th- you do well with, so I'm going to highlight some of the things I think you do well, is a shorter introduction. And I really respect that. And, and, I, was, and I, I mean no disrespect by saying this to other podcasters, but I was listening to a podcast the other day because the subject of it seemed very interesting to me. It was a show I had never listened to, but I found the episode. I was like, I'm going to listen to this. What about mistakes that people make with podcast hosting? The, the number one problem I find is, uh, first off, bad questions. And again, I, I want to, everybody who's listening today, I, I want to be as sensitive as I can. We're all on a journey. We're all learning. And if, I, if you hear something I say, don't feel like I'm beating you up about it. Just allow it to sink in and maybe it's a chance for you to improve. The worst question I always hear hosts say, and it's the most common one that I hear is, hey, Alex, welcome to the show. Tell the listeners about yourself. I mean, I'm I'm more polished now, but when you first asked me that three or four years ago, I would ramble for 10 minutes. I would tell you about my childhood. I tell you about this. I tell you about my hobbies. That's not what people want to hear that are listening. They want it to be pointed and if you just go open ended like that, it makes it for it makes a really tough question for an inexperienced guest who might be a really great guest to answer because you give them no framework. So the first thing I hear a lot of hosts do is they just ask they ask the wrong questions. Now, even if that you want to start off with something a little more bubbly, find something. Hey, Alex, welcome to the show. I just noticed on your social media you just got back from a conference. Can you tell the listeners how that was and why you were there? That's a really pointed question that should direct the, re- direct the rest of the conversation that you're going to have. So for me, starting from the first question, have intentionally, intentionality with it, a focus, a direction that you want it to go. And I think that, again, bad questions are one of the, the primary things I see go wrong with a podcast episode. Another one uh, similar is the idea that you would already get out of the way in the early uh, part of the interview what their website is, where you can contact them a little bit kind of, you know, ease them up, like you said, with something kind of fun, but then also say, yeah, this person is amazing and you can check them out here without going necessarily long, like we we talked about, but maybe getting some of that out of the way first, is that uh, useful or no? I have not figured out how to do that well yet, John, if I can be transparent. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress myself. There's some hosts that do that really well and somehow their guests don't just like, oh yeah, can I talk about that for five minutes, right? If you can find tasteful ways to do that, I think it's brilliant because what, you know, we mentioned Podmatch up front. That's why I gave the disclaimer of what, of what it is because what I don't want someone doing is me being like, yeah, Podmatch, and then we just get into it. They're going to be like Googling what is Podmatch instead of listening to the interview, right? That's why you give the short description. I, I'm a work in progress as a podcast host and always will be. I would love to be able to, in the first three minutes, bring their product slash service in that they want to talk about, give the quick example, and then keep it going. So the listener says, I know what this person does. And they have that. And then, of course, I think it's important to reinforce at the end because you want to, as a host, give a singular call to action. And usually it would be the guest call to action for doing an interview, right? Of what their next step is before it rolls into the next episode. If they're enjoying it, they're going to be keep on, they're going to enjoy, keep on listening. But you want to make sure that, hey, here's the step you're going to take and let's move on to the next thing. How can Podmatch help podcasters find guests? Like I said early on, it works very similar to a, a dating app. It has an, a very advanced algorithm that takes things into consideration, like the simple things like language availability. So it's not telling you, hey, this person's available at 2 a.m. your time. You want to interview them, right? Like it takes those basics into consideration. But beyond that, it's smart enough to understand who you're looking for and to, to suggest matches to you. 
you don't have to take them. It's up to you, right? Like as the host, only you can know who's actually going to be the right fit. But it's going to say, hey, here's here's a batch of people that might be a good fit. Take your pick. What do you think? And that's really how it's helping. And, and past that, I wanted to get some of the basics out of the way. So for me, and I think this is an important part of being a good podcast host, is again, really vetting your guests well, but also doing the research up front. And for me, I realized I was like searching around for these people's websites, searching around for blogs, searching around for what they like to talk about right now. The Podmatch profile serves, also serves as a guest one sheet. So I can see questions they're ready to answer. I can see topics they want to focus on. I can see things like, hey, here's their bio that they would want me to read before we get started. Here's their call to action link that they want. Here's every link to them. Here's some pictures I can use. The idea was for the podcast host, can they have everything they need in one spot? Now, still, yes, go do your research, go listen to them. But can we give you the foundation of it all to save you hours of time? And we also allow them to message right within the platform. So the idea, once again, is to simplify the administrative process while finding the best possible guest. If you want to, and you're using Podmatch, you can technically have a guest on the show without ever exchanging a single email and do it all through the platform, including scheduling and everything. Again, we wanted to make it as easy as possible. And that's, that's what we've set out to achieve. And we continuously focus on how to improve that process.